for most of the applications in power electronics, the voltages that we want to switch in the power stage, like in this case, maximum 100 volt for the MOSFET IRF540, are far beyond what the gate source voltage of those devices can tolerate. Typically, they're either limited to plus 20 volt or to plus minus 20 volt, where the minus is not that relevant in the practical application. But to drive the gate charges, we need an extra gate driver that is charging and discharging the input capacitance of the power devices during the operation. Gate drivers typically contain a totem pole stage, symbolized with a high side switch and a low side switch here, and that totem pole stage is directly connected to the gate. And that driver stage itself needs its own power supply, which is within the limits of the gate source voltage the device can handle. This is typically a DC power supply. And the negative terminal of the supply is connected to the source of the MOSFET. Therefore, we can control the power device with its on and off state through the gate source voltage. And the gate driver in here with its totem pole stage helps to charge and discharge the gate capacitance. Now, in some topologies, we have seen a half bridge configuration. That was in a half bridge power supply, in a full bridge power supply, but also in a synchronous rectified buck or boost converter. Both of them contain a high side power device and a low side power device. And we typically have a DC voltage on the drain of the high side. For example, in a half operation, the positive supply voltage and the source of the low side device is connected to the negative supply voltage or ground. The input signal to that circuit is the pulses that we are getting from the pulse width modulation circuit. In any case, we want to control the gate source voltage of both the low side and the high side device. But the source voltage of the high side device is a switching node, is a node that can be varying from high to low in terms of the power signals. On the other hand, the low side device is referred to a steady state voltage, a DC voltage. So we can provide an external DC voltage as the supply line for the low side gate driver, but the supply voltage for the high side gate driver needs to float and needs to move up and down with the switch node. To address those floating voltages, we need a high side level shifter and a low side level shifter to get signals that are referred to the respective source node of the two power devices. When the low side MOSFET is on, the voltage to drive its gate is provided by the gate drive voltage, conducts through the upper switch in the totem pole of the gate driver and charges the gate capacitance of the low side MOSFET. And through the ground line and the decoupling capacitor, the loop is closed. That turns on the low side power MOSFET and the switch node is connected to the negative supply rail minus Vs. That means furthermore, the lower end of that so-called bootstrap capacitor is also pulled to minus Vs. Furthermore, that leads to the bootstrap diode to conduct and charge the bootstrap capacitor, which we then later on can use to drive the high side MOSFET. So now when the pulse signal here switches, the low side level shifter tells the low side power device through the low side gate driver to turn off. And simultaneously, the pulse signal is shifted through the high side level shifter and turns on the high side power device through the high side gate driver. And in this case, the upper device in the totem pole stage here is charging the gate source of the high side power MOSFET. The return pass is through its source and the bootstrap capacitor that we have charged when the low side device was on. Another way 
to generate the floating supply voltage for a high side driver is through a charge pump. The output voltage from a charge pump here is generated through an intermediate voltage from the flying capacitor. The one I'm showing here on the slide is a one to one converter, but you can also do one to two or two to one converters, which represents the voltage gain of the circuit. There are various variations of those circuits and they are also called switch capacitors or switch caps. It has two stages of operation. Either the first two switches are on simultaneously and we charge the flying capacitor directly from an input voltage. Or the other two switches are on simultaneously and we discharge the flying capacitor into the output capacitor to provide the output voltage. Now there are plenty of integrated circuits on the market which contain most of those functionalities in one IC. This block diagram is from the datasheet of a so-called UCC 28025, which is sharing its datasheet with another device which is called UC28023. Up here we can see the oscillator part where you connect an external resistor and an external capacitor to the pins RT and CT, or you supply alternatively an external clock and synchronize your circuit to any other clock that you might have in the circuit and fulfills the right frequency range. This is a bidirectional pin, so you can also use the output as the master and synchronize other devices as slaves with respect to this circuit. Then we have an error amplifier down here with the non-inverting and the inverting input and the output of the error amplifier routed out so the user can build its control circuit around it. Very often the resistors and capacitors you connect here and form your PI, PID controller or other controllers are called the loop filter. Furthermore, the device contains a soft start capability. That means the nine microampere current source is charging an externally connected capacitor out here. And depending on the size of the capacitor, the voltage on this node here rises faster or slower, and the slower it rises, the slower the duty cycle ramps up to its steady state. On top of the voltage control loops, you can also build current control loops, typically sensing the current through a power MOSFET by an external resistor, and you configure the pins I-limit reference and I-limit for different sensibilities of that circuit functionality. Down here, we can see the supply pins of the circuit, pin 15 and pin 10, with an under voltage lockout functionality, here trimmed to operate at nine volts. And when VCC is good, that is when we are within the operating range of the supply voltage, a built-in linear regulator generates the reference voltages, which are also available to the outside on this pin and typically provide a few milliampères for the user to use for other things around the chip. The comparator functionality is here implemented as a latch, a reset and a set latch. And finally, we have the output stage here, being ready to drive the inputs of a gate driver. The further logic in here and the toggle flip-flops here make sure that output A and output B are never turned on at the same time so we don't have any cross-conduction between our power voltages in the circuit. Furthermore, the output stage has its own supply pins, pin 13 and pin 12. Now this is just one out of many representations of a so-called control circuit for power converters.